Alright. So we have to, uh, have to connect this thing to the internet. We'll wait for some people to hop on. Sorry about that. I'm uh Taylor Made, what's going on, man? What the hell is this? Okay. Alright. Okay. We're rolling. I think I'm good to go. I'm just a little bit behind the what's it called here is a little bit behind uh I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, guys, what's everybody doing tonight? Um, what's everybody shooting tonight? I have a very limited time to talk because I have to pack for my trip. Leaving out tomorrow, going to Tennessee. Should be a good time. I'm going to do nothing for five days, or six days, or whatever it is. We're going to drive there, we're going to camp, we're going to do a little sightseeing, a little hiking. I am going to do nothing. I'm... I'm very, very much looking forward to doing absolutely nothing. I need this so bad. I'm so tired. I'm so worn down. It's been running ragged over the last month. I'm trying to do so much stuff. It's been... It's been like... There's not a single day that I've had recently that I like just got to sit and relax every day I'm doing something it's been so crazy busy I've never been this busy before in my life I've never been this like pulled in so many directions before um, so for anybody that wants to know um, I am my the the the, the, the slingshot business that I've made for myself is doing very well. Shit, hold on. Um, the slingshot business that I've made for myself is doing very well. Well enough that I am at a point now where I am working, basically working two full-time jobs. And that is so tough to do. Um try to keep up with everything is a nightmare um, <laughs> I say that in a good way I mean it is a um, it, it's a lot of work let's just put it that way it's a ton of work and I am very excited about the direction that I'm going I just need time I just need time. I just need, uh, I need, like, a break, you know? And I need to think about what the proper direction for me to go in is. 
Um, yeah, I guess that's it. And, you know, right now I work a full-time job in addition to trying to run this slingshot business and uh, make slingshots and make content on YouTube and um, just generally be a part of the slingshot community. And uh, it's getting to the point now where I can't, I can't do that. I can't do both. So very likely in the near future, a um, couple months probably at the latest, I would imagine. I will be probably going to part-time at my job. We have to work on some things like the insurance and um, to figure out my vacation days because I still have a couple vacation days and if I don't use them before I go to part-time, I'll lose them. And I don't want to lose them. So, beside those little things, um, it's very I'm very excited. I mean, I'm very excited either way, but um, I do have to figure that stuff out and I don't know how long that's going to take. Been favoring my 90 millimeter frames and some 24, 4, 22, 14, 290, especially my Kodiak. Heck yeah, that one's a good one. I uh, Kodiak's my favorite frame right now. That's my shooter. Um, for those who didn't see, I have a, I got a custom that's made was made by Ethan, Ethan Martin from Tennessee Slangin, and uh, oh man. As soon as I put bands on it, I was sniping. The frame that I brought with me to the East Coast tournament was shooting high. And uh, I measured them up against each other, and they're exactly the same fork width. But for some reason, I am not shooting high with it. So I'm not I'm not 100% sure what why I'm not shooting high. Um... Like my ball was traveling high, I had to aim under. And my anchor point, I like my anchor point a little bit higher on my face, but my anchor point is basically perfectly set up for a 95 millimeter width. So, um, whatever voodoo <laughs> Ethan put on that frame, it's working out for me really well. Um, 90 millimeter all the way. How did you place it? ECST. Okay. So I'll give you guys a quick rundown. I'm actually going to be making a video on a recap, an ECST recap. Um, but I'll give you guys a quick rundown. ECST is one of my favorite weekends of the year. So it's, it's, uh, anybody even mildly interested in slingshots should try to figure out a way to get to that to that shoot it is such a good time and it was very very busy um it was very large gathering they said they think it was the largest slingshot competition ever on u.s soil that is amazing and to be a part of it, it was amazing there were 97 people who opted in to compete there were something like 85 scores Maybe more than that. Um, I placed 11th overall, which is my worst showing to date. It actually, I scored the least amount of points that I've ever scored there. <laughs> um, for one big reason, and the big reason was I bombed hard on the knockdowns. The Spanish knockdowns are a bugaboo of mine. They have been for a couple of years. I don't know why. They just are. I am going to be practicing more of the knockdowns again, but um, yeah, I bombed the knockdowns. So I actually scored, I was the high score in the woods course. So I won the woods course, got a little medal for that. It's around here somewhere. Um, 
And last year I won the Woods course at ECST, but I tied for first. So there was like three people that had the same score for first place. And this year I held that all alone. I actually um, beat, I think Tim Hemry had the second highest score in the Woods, and I beat him by two points in the Woods. Um, I got first place, I tied for first place in the can shoot as well. So the best you can do in the cans is 10 cans in a minute. Um, some competitions have increased the number of poss possible cans. Like at Hawking Hills, we had 20 that we could shoot in a minute. Bragging that you beat me. <laughs> What's up, Tim? Um, yeah, we had 10 cans to shoot in one minute, and I think um, I think like four or five people actually did that this year. Got all 10. F maybe more, actually. Um, but it was quite a few, so I tied for first in that event. And then I got... Um, like a 22 out of 30 points in the distance. I got a 4 out of 10 points on the uh, Shoot Your Eye Out challenge, which is not worth very many points. That is the one... Um, that's the one event that if you're going to suck, it's okay to suck at. Um, but I just, just still didn't do very well on that one. And then uh, the knockdowns. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I shot the knockdowns. I should have waited. I should have shot the knockdowns on Saturday like I shot everything else. I should have just practiced and dialed in. I didn't. And uh, I shot the knockdowns, and I got an 80. 80 points out of a possible 120. I mean, just bad. Bad shooting. And I would have scored quite a few more points had I continued on my um, intended... Uh, strategy, but in the last round, I threw caution to the wind. I kept shooting at that 10, and I just kept on and kept on and kept on, and I missed all the shots I took at the 10. Could not hit it to save my life, and uh, I managed to hit the 6 on the first shot, and I kept shooting at that 10, and so all I ended up with was... All I ended up with was 80 points total out of a possible 120. Um, so obviously the knockdowns are worth more than half the total points. If you bomb that event, you're, you're not going to win. And I did bomb that event. So 11th was about as good as I could have hoped for. Ethan does beautiful work. I love the one he did for you. I'm working to get a couple from him myself. Yeah, absolutely. Go get a frame from Ethan. He's he's putting up some great stuff. My internet was off for a while, so I think I'm late. Solomon shoot. Hey, Jose is in Italy right now, repping uh, the U.S. overseas uh, world championships. So let's all you know. Good luck to Ethan. Or good luck to Jesus. Good luck to Jose. <laughs> uh, get a frame from Ethan. Good luck to Jose. I'm so jealous. Yeah, me too, man. I wish I could go. I wish I could go. Something to look forward to for next time, though. So anyway, um... One of the things that we got to do is we're going to give away this beauty. This is a uh, custom Sasquatch that I made. This is a... So, there's a story behind this, actually. Um, when I made this um, core... It's a quarter-inch aluminum. I actually butchered the original core. Hey, Jordan, great job. Hey, Jay, what's up? Thank you very much, Jay. I uh, Woods course is my jam. I never practice in the woods, but I always manage to do well. Can't do anything else well, though. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so this is a... Um, 
This is a custom Sasquatch, and what happened was when I first originally made the core, I absolutely butchered the core. Um, I, I messed it up real bad, and I had to recover from that. And so I moved my template downward slightly, so I just moved it down like that. And I recut each of the edges, and what ended up happening was I took off just a little bit off of each side. So the whole frame is a little bit thinner. And instead of being a 92 millimeter width, this is about an 89 millimeter width. So um, it's very, very, very well done considering I did most of that by hand. And by eye um, but this is one of the nicer frames that I've ever made it's a quarter inch aluminum and then there's three layers of G10 it's white red and yellow and the yellow is like a very very bright vivid yellow the camera's not picking up how it actually looks in real life but I like this thing a lot um, and we are going to do the giveaway now. So, I believe there were three people that entered that qualified. those three da three names down shit I just spilled some ammo on my table oh, that's okay um, damn I need like a piece of paper okay. scrap piece of paper I hope this is scrap. I have a chupacabra that I made a year ago. <laughs> Tim, that doesn't count. You had to make it for the challenge. Hobby's Hobo checked in. What's up, man? Didn't want your mistakes anyway. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, so three people. I'm pretty sure three people completed the challenge. So uh, the first one was Ron. The second one was John. And the third one was Ethan. So I'm going to put those in order. One, two, and three. So you can see Ron, John... Ethan. Then What's up, Chris? Hey man, how you doing? Chris got one of my uh, Chris got one of my aluminum frames while I was down in Cloverdale this past weekend. Um, one of the better shooters too, actually. Um, picked it up immediately and was one of the better shooters um, up in Compton living the dream absolutely how you guys doing out there hoping the best for you thank you very much um, Ken Sandlin that means a lot man I am I'm just you know I can't jump ship too early I need to be able to make sure that it's gonna work not to make sure that it's gonna work because you never know if it's gonna work or not but I want to have a number of things set up before I jump ship so that I have a better chance, so I have a better shot. And one of the bigger things that I need is, is health insurance. I have a family I'm trying to provide for. Gotta have health insurance. Sweet slingshot. Thank you, Jay. Been a slow week. Oh. Um, well, let me know how it goes, uh, Chris. I really, really want to... Um, I really want to hear good things about these shoots because... Uh, I'm going to try to get out to more of them, and I'm going to try to, um, 
I'm going to try to do what I can to just sign up and compete because I think that would be fun too if there's uh, if there's some competitions out there that I feel like uh, would suit my suit my my style kind of. Chris is in Compton. He's in Compton, Michigan. He's not in Compton, California. That's funny. Okay, so this is for the big kahuna, big, uh, this is for the big prize, okay guys? Big Jim hired me full-time, I'm moving to Georgia. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome, I got, we got friends in Georgia. Um, <laughs> slingshot folk run deep, man. So these are the names in the orders, number one, number two, number three. This is as fair as I can make it, okay? I'm going to flip you guys around. One, two, three. Three numbers, three names. I'm going to hit the little spin bar. You guys are watching in live, real time. No cheating. What's going to happen? Who's going to win? And it is number... Number one. Ron. Ron is the winner. I know he's gonna be so excited. Um, I I'm excited for him. Ron, buddy, you just won my custom Sasquatch. The aluminum and G10 aluminum pins. This thing is clean. It's one of the nicest that I've made so far. And uh, Ron's gonna take it home. Appreciate everybody that um, that uh, entertained the idea. And uh, hopefully on the next one we get a uh, little bit more a um, little bit more participation. Um, but uh, you know we gotta start small, so that's okay. What's up, hey, <laughs> Tennessee slang and Ethan's here, and Maximo is here and. Uh, yeah, uh, he said thanks. I'm honored, uh, guys. I want to talk about the next challenge real quick. So, for those of you who don't know, you can sign up um, in the membership section of my YouTube. Okay, three levels of the membership. The first level is the insiders. So, the insiders are going to get um, behind the scenes stuff, they're going to get um. Uh, they're going to have access to like uh, members only live chats. That'll be something that we're going to do in the future here. Um, they will have um, the um, the posts. They'll see more uh, frequently. They'll be the first in line when I release new videos and do all that kind of stuff. So that's the insiders. It's two bucks a month, $1.99. Uh, then for, or that's uh, 99 cents rather. 99 cents. And then for uh, $2.99, the second tier is the collector's tier. And the collector's tier will get all the same stuff as the insiders. But they will also get a 25% discount, a permanent 25% discount in my Etsy shop. And so um, the discount typically on... Did a fantastic job on that, Smo. Thank you, man. I worked hard on that one. That was a... I, it, I almost trashed it. Uh, but uh, I, I managed to save it, and I think I uh, pulled it off. Uh, the the collector's tier. So the collector's tier are for people who want the discount in my Etsy shop. Typically, the discount is a 25% discount, and typically um, even a 25% discount on a $25 frame is more than what you'd pay per month. So if you buy one frame a month, you're already paying for that discount, and you're more than paying for the discount. But if you bought multiple, there's no limit to how much you can buy and win and how and all that. And then the third uh, tier is, I believe, seven ninety nine a month. I want to say. But the third tier is the cool tier. The third tier is the uh, challengers tier. And then in the challengers tier, we're going to do a monthly challenge. Now everybody is 
eligible to play along with the challenge. So when I say it's a challenger's tier, what I mean is the challengers are going to be eligible to win a raffle prize, the same thing that we just did just now um, with these three guys. They're all in the challenger's bracket, they're all in the challenger's tier, and they all completed the challenge for the month. So all you have to do is get into the challenger's tier and then complete the challenge every month. And actually this next challenge is going to go until the end of July um, because I really, really, I was so busy at the beginning of June, it's almost it's halfway over and I didn't come up with anything. Um, so what we're going to do um, for that, oh, and by the way, the Challenger's tier also gets a 35% discount in my Etsy shop. So um, they get a bigger discount in the Etsy shop, they get all the things that the other tiers get, and we're also going to be eligible to win a monthly prize via a raffle drawing like this by completing the challenge. So that's all you have to do. Sign up in the Challenger's tier, complete the monthly challenge. Um, be nice to have more competition next time. I don't feel like I quite, quite like I earned it. Well, that's the cool part about it. I think that the challenges are um, enough that it's cha a challenging to do, and I think that it is not so much that people won't do it. Um, but realistically speaking, um, it's not. It's not really that difficult. <laughs> 14 people watching, 6 likes, smash that button. Yeah, guys, hit, hit, hit the like button for me, if you will. Um, okay, so this month's challenge, for everybody watching, you can get on get in on this. You are all welcome to participate in the challenge, but you won't be eligible to win the prize unless you're in the challenger's tier. But this month's challenge is going to be um, an idea that Robert... Um, from Robert Rambles on gave me a while back and it's a found objects challenge now just like the last challenge there's going to be a couple rules the main thing that you want to know about this particular challenge is that you have to find or buy an object that is not a slingshot it was not meant to be a slingshot and you cannot alter that object in any way you can add to the object so i'm going to put that in as a caveat you can add to the object but you cannot take away from the object so if you use this marker and you want to make a stick shooter you can put all kinds of stuff on the marker but you cannot change the marker fundamentally <laughs> it has to stay exactly like this but or more, you can't take away from it. That's the challenge. And I want to see shooting videos this time. Um, I want you guys to make, find a frame somewhere out there. If you find something that's forked, all you have to do is put bands on it. That's literally the challenge. Find something that you're going to use as a slingshot. You can't take away from it. You can only add to it. And then shoot something with it. Shoot a can. Um, if you're in a place where you can take game, go ahead and take something. That's all the rules, okay? My fingers. <laughs> Tim, it has to be a thing, not on your body. That's, the, uh, that's one of the other rules. It has to be an actual object that is not already... You're on your person. And it can't be a slingshot either. You can't be like, hey, I found this slingshot over here. No, it has to be something that is was not intended to be used as a slingshot, would have never been used as a slingshot. But the vegetable peeler folks went out of business. Oh, yeah, John, I still have that hanging on the walls right over here. Right there. That's actually hanging with my Moanwaller Naturals 
and my John Jeffries and my Ray Bozanski and my Robert Persley frame. <clears throat> so <clears throat> those are the rules. Found objects, you have to get an object that was not meant to be a slingshot. You cannot take away from it. You can only add to it. And you have to shoot it. You have to band it up and shoot it like a slingshot. Shoot something with it. That's it. Um, those are the rules for next month. This challenge is going to go to the end of July. I want to give people a long enough opportunity. And um, I don't have anything going on at the end of July. So I should be able to right away um, start on... I, I, I should be able to pick up where we left off. The prize, by the way, the prize for this challenge is going to be another custom frame that I'm going to make. I'm going to make it out of G10, and uh, I haven't decided on the color combo yet. I haven't made it up, but you guys will see pictures of that when it does get made. Um, so, um, you know, watch out for that. That'll probably be done um, sometime in the next couple weeks. I'm going on vacation for a few days like about a week, um, and uh, I don't want to do anything when I'm on vacation. I'm bringing my Ethan Martin frame, and then I, and a bunch of ammo, and a bunch of band sets, and I'm going to hang out in the woods and shoot my slingshot and be happy for a week. <laughs> and I'm going to sleep, <laughs> which I cannot tell you how excited I am to be doing that oh I just need it so bad I need it so bad guys it's, cra it's crazy how like almost emotional I am about just getting to sleep yeah I, it's funny it's funny to me I guess Hopefully you won't run out of latex. <laughs> well, I I made up about uh, I made up about eight or nine band sets I think to take with me. Um, so I should be okay. Uh, if I run out, I run out. Oh well. And actually. I'm also going to bring this for funsies. This is just a frameless setup that I have that I can shoot. I can pull almost full butterfly. Um, so worst case scenario, I'll have uh, I'll have a frameless rig. Congrats, Tim, on the great showing at ECST. Yeah, Tim smoked us all. Uh, Tim rolled us all up in a big, um, big roll, big rolling paper, and smoked us all this year. We kind of saw that coming, though, honestly. Sounds like a well-deserved break. Congratulations on the slingshot business working out so well. Thank you very much. Um, there's a few things I'm working on right now that. Um, you know, I'm not trying to jinx anything, so I'm not going to be talking about, but I got, uh, like three new projects in the works that we are, um, that I am going to be very, very heavily pursuing a couple of different avenues for, you know, growth in the sport. Um, You know, I've said it before, the involvement in the sport for me is mostly about putting a slingshot in people's hands. That's what I want to do. And I want to do that however I can in the best way that I can. And so far, what I've found is that the best way that I can do it is to make really, really inexpensive frames. Sell them at a very, very low price and get as many people buying a slingshot as I can. The other thing that I've been doing is showing people how to make very inexpensive frames. So frames from a tree fork, frames from plywood, 
frames from HDPE, whatever. Um, the couple of things that I have coming down the pipeline um, are more direct, literally putting slingshots in people's hands and potentially not... I don't know if I want to talk about that right now, but basically what I have coming down the pipeline, I think will be a better way for me to get more people shooting than um, just making frames and selling them. So uh, hopefully that stuff works out. And uh, um, I think that there, there's a couple different pathways I can take. And I think that um, based on the trajectory I've gone, that at minimum one of them will work maybe multiple so i'm very very excited about that have you tried any of that stuff i sent you yeah man i've been cutting it up and trying all kinds of stuff i shot sniper sling yellow for a couple of weeks for like two or three weeks exclusively up until ecst and then once ecst passed and i i basically flunked out of school there <laughs> i uh i started cutting up a bunch of stuff i got latex all over the place and there's so much latex all around my house right now. I need to uh, clean up a little bit because uh, the wife is going to start. Uh, she's going to start getting angry with me soon. Rightfully so. I'm just I'm just a slob sometimes. Build it and they will come. That's the goal. Awesome man. Can't wait to see what you got coming. Yeah, it's uh, I, man, I'm excited because I'm at a point right now where I, again, I could go in a few different directions, and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to go in several directions and see what kind of sticks. Um, I love what I'm doing right now. I I wouldn't give that up for for nothing so if I you know when I get to the point where I can finally talk about it I think that uh, I think that everyone will f understand um, why I am not talking about it right now can't wait to see what you got going you put one in my hands that chupacabra I bought from you two years ago is still one of my favorite frames I own yes 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 um the Chupacabra. You want to talk about sheer dumb luck. Sheer dumb luck. This was actually the design that I made originally. This was the Yeti design. The Sasquatch was a scaled down version, but it's the same exact design. There's nothing different about it except for how big it is. And then I wanted to make my wife one. And after I scaled it down even further... I realized that some of the dimensions didn't work when it got that small, so I changed some of the dimensions up, and the Chupacabra became by far the most popular frame that I have. <laughs> uh, it's still... So the, the, the Kodiak has really caught up in terms of popularity. I think that has to do with the 90mm frame option. Most people uh, shoot about a 90mm frame. But... Uh, uh, the Chupacabra is still the most popular frame that I have. I Usually when I make batches, I have to make at least 50% more Chupacabras than I make of other frames. And they always tend to sell out faster than the other ones do. Um, it's kind of weird a little bit. Do hunt videos. So that's an interesting thing too, uh, Chris. Coming up, I, th I believe, is August... 15th, I think, is the first day of squirrel season in Indiana. And I have planned, already planned, several hunts that I'm going to go out on to try to take some squirrel. Um, I think that uh, that is something my channel is lacking, is the actual... Um, is the actual... Is actually going out to shoot a lot. That's what I think something I could improve on a lot. Kodiak is a killer design. Thank you for that. It's my favorite. Opinion on the LBS frame. I do. I have never shot an LBS. 
I probably won't. Um, several frames out there that are similar dimensions to, to an LBS that I think uh, the, just aesthetically I like better, um, but I don't have an opinion about it because I've never shot one, and I probably won't. <laughs> yeah, um... I have quite a few opinions about the controversies, I guess, surrounding the LBS, um, but the actual frame itself, I've never shot one, so I can't give you an opinion about it. I should get a, I should get a ball. I don't think I have any down here right now, though. Try to shoot this clay. It was really low. Come on, spit it out, spill the drama. That's a wormhole I'll stay away from. Yeah, um... I'm going to try to put this as diplomatic as possible. Um... Okay, first and foremost, I believe in capitalism and freedom. I think that um, the only fair form of economy is laissez-faire capitalism. And that is basically that uh, people should be able to earn money how they think they should earn money. And that nobody should be able to say boo about it. If somebody's selling a product that other people are buying and they're selling enough of it to earn a living, then the proof that they're doing the right thing is in the money that they're making from it. If they're being dishonest, if they're being deceitful, if they're being... Um, if, they're, if they're not doing what they should be doing in terms of uh, uh, ethics and morals go, I think they'll be found out. And I think that people are smart enough to avoid dealing with those types of people however the market always picks the winners so if there's a market for a product regardless of how bad the product is or where whose idea the product originally came from that people are going to go get that product if there's a market for it That's it. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing that I believe. Capitalism and freedom. Do the things you think you should do to make money. And if the market decides that the product is valuable, then you'll make the money you should make. If the, pro if the market decides that the product is not valuable, then you won't make the money you should make. That being said, I think that trying to protect an idea, trying to protect an idea, is... a bad idea itself. Um, 
and I think that it's a bad idea for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is that if I have an idea, and the idea is a half-cocked idea, and somebody finishes the idea and makes it better, they should be able to do that because that product, the people who want that product deserve to have the better product. Um, uh, so, like, I think that patents are and patent laws are stupid uh, because who cares if they came up with it first? Who cares if they came up with the idea first? I don't really think that that matters to anybody. Um, I think what matters to everybody is who can make the better product. Who can make the better product or the cheaper product or a better cheaper product. And if you have patent laws that protect ideas, you're stifling innovation. Again, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible here. Hey, tell Jorge I said hi. Um, and and that's my big thing within the Slingshot community. I came up with a few designs. They're very, you know, it's a Y shape. It's pretty derivative to begin with. Um, a Slingshot is just a Y shaped stick. Um, there's been very, very few innovations in Slingshots as far as I'm concerned. Um since their inception um, you, you got a y-shaped stick um, I mean how innovative are you really being to begin with um, I just think that the people who make the best products should be allowed to make them and sell them and the people who want to buy those products should be able to buy them and that should be where it ends we don't need to bring anybody else into this we don't need to bring any um, we certainly don't need to bring government into this. We don't need to bring other people into the transaction at all. So, um, make what you want, sell what you want. If you have a genuinely good idea and you have a genuinely good design that's your own design that, and you're making that to sell, then people should buy it from you if you can make them properly and if you can't make them properly, then you should have somebody else make that design properly for you. Um, it's like, you know, people, if people are buying it, there's a market for it, so what what do I have to say about it? Nothing. People want to buy what they want to buy. <laughs> That's all. <clears throat> Back to work small, I'll holler at you later. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Ethan. I'm about to get going too, man. I got a pack. <laughs> I'm leaving out tomorrow morning, and I have like half a. Pa I have like my bag's like half packed. Ugh. <sighs> I can't wait to sleep, man. Can't wait to hang out and sleep. I'm bringing my hammock. Oh, it's gonna be so sweet. Oh, it's gonna be so sweet. Have a good night, man. Appreciate the response. Absolutely. Uh, thank you all for playing. Guys, the challenge is there. The challenge is up and ready. This was what the first winner of the challenge just won. a custom made by myself and uh, go do the challenge guys it's very quick and easy sign up and um, complete the challenge that's all you have to do you could win the cost you could win the next one I'm gonna make the next one out of solid G10 um, and uh, you know hopefully it comes out as good as this one did because this one came out great uh, and that's it. I'm gonna get going. I'm going to um, I'm gonna go pack and I'm gonna go to sleep. G10 over aluminum. No, it'll be just solid G10. I have some aluminum right now, but uh, I have quite a few orders that I had to get through for just the blanks. 
to make cores with and uh, a couple of aluminum uh, frames that I have to knock up. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to have left after that, but I'll have plenty of G10. It'll be solid G10. Um, I think I have some greens left and some black and um, we'll see. We'll make something nice. The one you just showed. Yeah, it's an aluminum core. Quarter inch aluminum and then three layers of one millimeter G10. Yeah, absolutely. Um, congratulations to Ron. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get going, guys. So I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. And uh, man, excited for the future, guys. Pumped.